Experiencing turbulence on your flight can be startling, but it's a normal part of air travel. Turbulence occurs when sections of air are disturbed by outside forces, such as wind, changes in weather, or physical disturbances. When an airplane encounters turbulence, it physically moves up and down in the air, but usually not more than a few feet at a time. The physics behind turbulence can be very complex, so it can be a little unpredictable, but it's typically not dangerous. Think of the air in the atmosphere like a fluid. The air moves chaotically due to changing air currents and jet streams, just like ocean currents and waves on the beach. During a pilot's training, they encounter turbulence frequently, and through experience, they learn how to react and to plan for it. So, exactly what causes turbulence on an aircraft, and could it cause an accident? There are many different things that can create turbulence, and some are more predictable than others. Mechanical turbulence is caused by terrain obstructing the airflow, for an example, over mountains or tall buildings. Wind flows up a mountain smoothly, but on the other side, as the terrain slopes down, the air falls with it and becomes turbulent similar to waves crashing on the beach. This turbulence is typically encountered at lower altitudes, so it usually doesn't affect flights cruising at high altitudes. A form of turbulence that commercial flights might experience at low altitudes is called wake turbulence. Wake turbulence is the disturbance in the wind flow, which is created when an airplane generates lift, which is any time the wheels are no longer touching the ground. A plane's weight can be extremely dangerous in certain circumstances and has the potential to damage an aircraft and injure passengers, especially when the plane is heavy, clean, and slow. Clean means with flaps and landing gear retracted. The strong winds can cause autopilot to disconnect and pilots can lose control of the plane. On November 12, 2001, American Airlines Flight 587 crashed due to control inputs trying to compensate for wake turbulence from a Boeing 747. We cover the details of this crash in episode 14 of Black Box Down, titled Crashing in a New York Neighborhood. This is why it's important for aircraft to maintain a certain distance between each other, especially during takeoff and landing. Pilots are specifically trained on how to avoid wake turbulence as best as possible. Some forms of turbulence can be predicted, such as convective turbulence. The earth is heated unevenly and land heats up a lot faster than water does, so areas like deserts and rocky terrain absorb and release more heat than areas with lots of water and plants. These areas release columns of heat that rise and interact with the air surrounding a plane. It also occurs within cumulonimbus clouds, which are associated with thunderstorms. Pilots usually fly above or around predicted storms. Convective turbulence is felt more prominently during takeoff and landing. At higher altitudes, the plane is usually not affected by it. And this is because planes fly at the tropopause, which is about 36,000 feet in altitude, where the troposphere meets the stratosphere. Here, temperatures are a lot colder and the air is a lot more stable than at lower altitudes. If turbulence is less common in the tropopause, why do we still experience it? And could it ever be dangerous? Sometimes jet streams occur, and these air currents move quickly and narrowly, zigzagging, usually from west to east. They form when warm and cold air masses, known as fronts, meet. When these fronts meet, the wind speed and direction can change drastically both vertically and horizontally, and these shifts are known as wind shears. Unlike storm clouds, air masses aren't visible, so it's hard to avoid them, and they're most common at the tropopause, where the plane is for the majority of its flight, so that's why you might feel a few bumps while cruising at 36,000 feet. Luckily, if the turbulence gets too bumpy, a pilot can quickly climb or descend about 2,000 feet in altitude to make a speedy escape. 